Hello, seventh graders, and let's start with geometric sequences with 6.6. .6. So first off, let's review arithmetic. If you remember, arithmetic sequences are when you'd start with a number, so like 4, 8, 12, 16, and you would add or subtract a number to get to the next term in the sequence. In a geometric sequence, it's when we're going to start with something like 3, and then we're going to go to 9, and then we're going to go to 27, 81. Now here, in a geometric sequence, we're multiplying by 3 every time, which is what a geometric sequence is. You're multiplying or dividing to get from one term to the next. So let's go over what you're going to learn. You are going to learn how to identify geometric sequences, how to graph them, and how to write them as functions. This part is important. That last piece, applying what we know about functions to geometric sequences. So here is your key concept. So let's look at this. What does this all mean? In a geometric sequence, the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms, that means from one term to the next, is the same. So this ratio is called the common ratio. Reminder that while division can be used to get to the next term, we always write it in the term of multiplication. So what are you multiplying by to go from one term to the next? And that is the common ratio. Each term is found by multiplying the previous term by a common ratio. So for example, if you are going from 1 to 5, 5 to 25, and 25 to 125, we are multiplying by 5. Therefore, our common ratio is 5. So let's start with two easy examples. In example one, we are going to determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. And we can explain. So in our first example, if we go from 120 to 60, 60 to 30, 30 to 15, we will see that we are taking a half each time. So if we're taking a half each time, that means we are multiplying by a half. Therefore, our common ratio is one half, and this would be geometric. In our next example, we add four, we add five, we add six. This is actually neither because you're not adding the same amount every time. You're not multiplying each time. Therefore, this sequence represents neither arithmetic or geometric. So the next part is writing the next three terms of the sequence. So you can use a table. You can use anything you would like to figure out what the pattern is. So in our first one, A, we are going from 3 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 24. We are multiplying by 2 each time. So the next three terms would simply be 48. 48 multiplied by 2 is 96. Multiplied by 2 is 192. There you go. Easy peasy. B, what are we doing each time here? We are multiplying. Well, obviously we multiply by a negative because um, it's switching. But we also have to um, multiply by a fraction um, lower between 0 and 1 because uh, we're decreasing every time. So we're dividing. So we're dividing, looks like, by 4 by 4 by 4. So we're actually multiplying by 1 fourth each time. So because we're multiplying by 1 fourth, negative 1 multiplied by negative a fourth is positive 1 fourth. Multiply by negative 1 fourth is negative 1 16th. And our last one is 1 64th. So those are the next three terms. All right, in example three, we want to graph the geometric sequence. And then we're going to, I want you to observe what you're noticing. All right, this is the important piece. This is kind of like that, that oh, that kind of makes sense moment. When you graph, people are like, well, how do you graph this? They're just numbers. You must turn it into ordered pairs. And when we look at graphing it, we have to look at it as um, like an x, y. 
but the first term is always the position in the sequence. So, for example, if I'm graphing this, we're going to graph it as m, we don't use x, and the term it's in is a sub m, like the value, so the position is n. So this would be the first term of the sequence, the second term of the sequence, the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term, since we have five points here. Now, the value at the position of the first term is 32. The second term is 16. The third term is 8. The fourth term is 4. And lastly, it's 2. So from there, if we graph it, we get this. So what do we notice? This is important. Why are we learning about geometric sequences? Because what can you tell me about this graph? It's exponential. This right here represents exponential. So you would actually write, what do you notice? You would write, it appears that the points lie on an exponential curve or an exponential graph. And certainly it does. Which leads into our next thing, which is writing a sequence as a function. We have to write them as a function, folks. Um, we have to take what we know about sequences and writing them as a function. So, because consecutive terms of geometric sequences have a common ratio, you can use the first term and the common ratio. So I want you to like make note of that. This is all you need to write a function. The first term and the common ratio. You remember with arithmetic sequences, we wanted the d value, the common difference, and the first term. Uh, by the way, these are all called um, explicit functions. Now, we're going to talk more about that um, in video 6.7, but these are explicit functions um, when you actually can write a function that represents any term in the sequence. So right here, these are the position of the numbers. This is the term. So the first term is represented by the first position. We'd write it as a sub 1. The second term is a sub 1 multiplied by the first term. The third term can be the first term multiplied by the common ratio twice, and so on. And this right here is how we write it. And this is an example of how it looks. Um, this is the position number multiplied by 5. So the first term multiplied by um, 5. Here we multiply by 5 twice. Here we multiply by 5 three times, and so on. And this is your equation. Don't forget this. a sub n would be the nth term of the geometric sequence. The first term is a sub 1 multiplied by the common ratio, which is r to the n minus 1. So what this means is to find, like, r to the n would be the current term you're on. We would take r to the n minus 1 multiplied by the first term. So the common ratio to subtracting 1 from the current position multiplied by the first term. Let's do an example. But here's a study tip for you. Our function right here is written in the form of a multiplied by b to, uh, to, time, yeah, b to the x power. So if we look here, the first term, a, multiplied by our base, which here is our common ratio, to an exponent. This is why it's exponential. So here's example four. Write an equation for the nth term. So this is writing your function. I want you to write a function for that sequence. By the way, this is an explicit function because you're able to write something where it's going to give you um, any term in the sequence that you want. This is how you write a geometric sequence. We start with our formula. Our formula is taking the first term, multiplying it by the common difference I'm sorry, the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So our first term here is 2. Our common ratio, what's happening every time? We are multiplying by 6. So it's going to be 6 to the n minus 1 power. And that is the formula. So keep in mind, this is your function. We write our function first. Now from there, I want to evaluate that for the 10th term. So the 10th term would be 2 multiplied by 6 to the 10 minus 1, which is 9. So if we did that, 6 to the 9th multiplied by 2, it would give you a to the 10th term. 
So the tenth term is twenty million one hundred and fifty five thousand three hundred and ninety two. So those are my two answers. All right, so that was the equation. If we write it as a function, notice we here, instead of um, putting a sub n, we put f of n. You can rewrite the equation for geometric sequences in function notation by plugging in the f of n. The domain of the function is the set of positive integers. Make note of this. This is every time you do this. This will never change. The domain of any geometric function is the set of positive integers. The domain of the geometric function is the set of positive integers. All positive integers. Because think about it. It's the first term of the sequence, the second term of the sequence, the third term. There's no decimal. There's no negatives. But it's all like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's, you would write exactly this. The domain is the set of all positive integers. Our last example, example 5. Clicking the zoom out button on a map website doubles the side length of the square map. After how many clicks on the zoom out button is the side length of the map 640 miles? So the first thing we're going to do is write a function. Notice I'm writing a function. I am writing a function. It is important to set these up properly. So, f of m. What would that be? What's our first term here? Well, it would be a map side length of 5 miles. Every time, what's happening? It's being multiplied by 2. So there's my function right there. That's my function. So now, I want to know after how many clicks it, do we have 640 miles. Well, how many clicks is x? So I'm actually wanting to find x, or n, I should say. So that means my y value, or my f of n value, is 640. So I plug in 640 equals 5, multiplied by 2 to the n minus 1. We used what we learned with uh, solving equations. So I divide both sides by 5. 640 divided by 5 is 128 equals 2 to the n minus 1. I can rewrite these with the same base. 128 can be rewritten as 2 to the 7th equals 2 to the n minus 1, which will give me the equation 7 equals n minus 1, which will give me 8. So the answer would be, after how many um, clicks, we would have 8 clicks. And there's my answer.